Hey everybody, Brian Loans here. I am inside the trailer of the Phillips Connect Top Fuel team and I am here for a very good reason. Someone will run 300 miles an hour in the eighth mile. It's been 30 years since Kenny Bernstein ran 300 in the quarter mile, going 30170 at the 92 Gator Nationals. I'm here because Mike Green is the guy in the trailer and because Phillips Connect has started a club. 30,000 bucks goes to the first person to breach 300 in the eighth mile and Mike Green's a crew chief of this car and he's going to tell us how he thinks people can do it. All right, so I'm here with Mike Green, crew chief of the Phillips Connect Top Fuel Car. He has let me into the inner sanctum. And Mike, this whole deal about somebody going 300 in the eighth mile, I'm pretty sure you were there in 92 when Bernstein went 300 to four. Yeah, I sure was. It was, <laughs> it was quite a day for all of us to uh, to watch, uh, you know, Dale Armstrong and Wes Cerny and uh, Kenny accomplish that. So the way they accomplished it is kind of in the same way you're going to accomplish it, or somebody will, in terms of using technology, data acquisition, really the type of things that Phillips Connect does in their regular business in the trucking industry. So I want to talk to you about some of the channels that you pay most attention to on the race car, and really the three most important ones to try to get that 308. Our uh, sensors and data acquisition has, you know, grown by leaps and bounds from what we had back then. Back then there was maybe 10 things that we measured, now there's 60 different things we measure. <laughs> in a short amount of time, but uh, you know our runs are so short, the more uh, data we can gather on a run uh, helps us tune the car for the next run. Obviously the conditions kind of dictate sure. how quick and fast we can run on a, any given you know, run. And really the measurement of the data is one thing, but the improvement in the horsepower that these cars have made in 30 years is almost double under my understanding, and it's been kind of incremental progress. No, it really has, and, it's, and what has to work with it is that we, uh, we out horsepowered the parts, you know, we had cast blocks and we started building where the blocks wouldn't last so we had to build a build block and the, the rods weren't strong enough and the pistons weren't strong enough so we crankshafts. So uh, as the horsepower has increased we've had to increase the strength of the parts so they would withstand the extreme cylinder pressures that we make. You know, the sensors help us do that, you know, uh, uh, everything we monitor just, uh, you know, our ignition system is twice as strong as it used to be. Our supercharger system that makes the manifold pressure, they're twice as efficient as they used to be. And I, I look from Kenny's run, and I'd be guessing a little bit, but we probably put about twice the fuel volume in our engine today than they did now then. So then it was about 45 to 50 gallons a minute. So <laughs> a 55 gallon drum is still minute. ridiculous. Well, now we put over 90 in there, so almost two drums. Yeah. Over the years, it's, uh, you know, it's been a process of putting more air and fuel in the engine to make more cylinder pressure to make more horsepower. You know, when we think about achieving this this 300 mile an hour barrier in the eighth mile, one of the things that's pretty incredible to me is cars are the same length, motors in the same place, and yet you've been able to over time kind of improve this stuff. Performance clubs and drag racing have a great history, right? Going back to the Crater Five right. Second Club back yeah. in the day, it's meaningful. In my opinion, as a kind of a paid fan, it's meaningful to get in those clubs. As a crew chief, it's probably the same way. Yeah, I think it'd be really cool. It's been pretty close for a while, so it just shows how hard it is to do. You know, I mean, we've gotten close to it here lately, you know, but the, it's conditions. In the spring and the fall, we have better conditions. We have a better chance of doing it because we run in good conditions more often. The tracks are cooler, yeah. but uh, in the summer, not so much, but coming up this fall, there's a pretty good chance this might happen. And uh, yeah, it would be great if our uh, Phillips Connect uh, dragster did it. So there's another great connection to 300 miles an hour with this Phillips Connect team. We know what Mike's role is. Let's talk to one more guy who's involved in this program that has a big role at 300 himself. Well, Mike Green had to go back to work and he threw me out of the crew chief lounge so I couldn't spy on what he was doing in there. But I'm lucky enough to run into Jim Epper out here. And Jim, when I got to talk to Mike, he told me about all these different data points he can collect off of his dragster. And as I look at this Phillips Connect board and I see what's available to collect off of a trailer, it's kind of the same level. Yeah, it is. I mean, think of this, this nose box as your race pack. So this is where you collect the data and you transmit the data. So the advantage to us is we can send it over the air as opposed to have to download it. So it collects all the data from all the sensors, and, and we have two, two things we're really monitoring. is the health of the trailer, and then for operations, we want to know a lot of other things, like is my trailer loaded or not loaded? So we start with these sensors here. So this is like an air tank sensor, a regulator sensor. The air tank, if your brakes, if your pressure is below 80 pounds, for example, it'll, it'll drag the brakes and potentially cause a thermal event. So you want to make sure you monitor that, the regulator, we put our tire pressure monitoring right on these hoses that feed air right to the tires. And what's really cool is when you open the door, this is like real life, 
Ah, and you look inside the trailer. <laughs> this camera takes a picture of the cargo that's being loaded. So it's really a, a really valuable tool for the operations people. Well, and certainly in a business like trucking, you want to be as efficient as you can with those trailers. The more full they are, the more money you're going to make, right? And being able to monitor those events are great. We can pre-check all of these sensors without even a truck connected to it. It is pretty amazing, and the parallels are very even between drag racing and top fuel dragster and all this technology in a trailer. Mike Green is monitoring the health of his engine, the efficiency of the engine. With Phillips Connect in your transportation business, you're monitoring not only the health of your equipment, but the efficiency of how it's being used and operated. And Jim, you guys are on the cutting edge of this stuff. Yeah, I think we are. So I appreciate it, and I love the correlation between the two. 320 miles an hour or 53 feet down the highway, they got you covered.